Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about tanking in Battlefield 1, specifically focusing on the heavy tank here because it's my favorite tank and I think the best tank in Battlefield 1, but a lot of the tips and tricks I'm going to be doling out here will be applicable to most of the tanks in the game. Now once you unlock the different variants of the heavy tank, there's three different choices. You have the basic heavy assault tank, then there's the heavy breakthrough tank, and the heavy flamethrower tank. All three of these are actually pretty fun and viable choices. Personally, I still go with the heavy assault tank, the basic tank there just because I really like having the smoke cloud as a defensive measure. I use it all the time. It saved my ass like so many times. The other variants seem to have some more impressive offensive abilities for the side gunners. So if you're playing with friends and you really want to give them some better guns, you might pick uh, the breakthrough tank or the flamethrower tank. And although the heavy tank really can benefit from having side or rear gunners to help protect you from people trying to sneak up on you, it's not necessary always to have them. And I've driven the heavy tank solo plenty of times, or there've just been moments where I don't feel like the side gunners or the rear gunners are really doing much just because of the angles that we're approaching the enemies. It's always nice to have somebody there. And uh, probably the most useful teammate you can have in any tank is a support player playing with the repair wrench. They are not necessarily gonna live a long time while they're trying to repair your tank as smoke and artillery and stuff like that can make quick work of them. But if they get out, they can definitely help you win any sort of one-on-one -on -one tank battle, maybe even a two-on-one -on -one tank battle. Now, generally speaking, when I get into a tank battle, the defining factor, unless the other tank driver is really not good at all, is how much your team is helping out. So if you're driving your tank around, generally speaking, you don't wanna go on a solo flanking route by yourself. You wanna stick with infantry, especially assault players, that can help you out when you start to go up against another tank. Heavy tanks slugging it out against each other can put every single round they have into each other and still be moving. They have so much armor and their main cannons do decent damage, but it just takes a while to get through that armor and take their health down. So any sort of help you can get from assault players on the battlefield is going to go a long way in deciding who wins that battle. And often because heavy tanks are slow and they can engage each other from range, if there's any sort of cover on the battlefield, one tank can easily just drive behind that cover, pop some smoke, and start repairing. So heavy tanks, for the most part, won't always finish each other off in a one-on-one -on -one battle. One will drive away, one will retreat, and they'll basically live to fight another day or a little bit later in that round. Now you'll notice that I'm spending most of my time playing in this tank from the third person camera. The third person camera not only allows you to see if anybody's sneaking up on either side of you, but it also actually makes it so that the shot of your tank comes out of a different location. In fact, the shot from your tank while you're in the third person camera, as far as I can tell, comes out of the camera itself, which is positioned uh, several feet above the tank. This allows you to shoot over walls or obstacles that you can't shoot over from the first person view. It's a pretty weird situation. It's basically a tank head glitch, if you will. Um, and I think it's kind of broken at this point. Uh, and I even demonstrated a little bit later in the video where I'm looking over some sand dunes on the Suez map and I'm able to shoot targets that literally don't even see my tank because it has not yet crested the sand dune. So basically, the third person camera shot glitch in the tank, uh, it's not even a glitch really, but just the shooting mechanic is, uh, is crazy. And once you understand it, you can absolutely take advantage of it and make these vehicles even more powerful than I think they're initially intended to be. Now, aside from having extremely heavy armor, one of the best attributes of the heavy tank is the quick repair. Now, this isn't holding down X or whatever your repair button is to do a timed repair where you have to watch that little repair wheel cycle around until you get the repair points. I'm talking about an instantaneous repair that repairs your tank for almost a third of its health. This ability has a timed cooldown and I'm using it all the time. It means that I don't have to put everything on hold and cycle through my repair wheel. I can just pop this button and instantaneously repair without having to get out of the combat. I use it all the time. Anytime I basically start to take a little bit of damage, I'll even use it if I know I'm not going to see combat for a while and I've got like five percent damage done to my tank I'll just pop it because I know it'll be 
recharged by the time I get back into combat. Now here I'm taking advantage of the first person view because it gives me the ability to zoom in ever so slightly to finesse my aim and I'm absolutely obliterating the people in this building right here because I don't really need to see over obstacles right now. There's no benefit to using the third person camera and I don't think anybody's sneaking up behind me because on the mini map I've got friendlies on both sides. So I feel pretty safe in general. So those are the times that I'll switch to first person. I basically we'll use it as sort of like my sniper view and for everything else I'll be running in third person view. Now during the alpha and beta a lot of people were using the canister shot on the light tank and the heavy tank because it was incredibly good at sniping infantry and it still is pretty good at taking out infantry. It's not as good as it was before but uh, I find myself using the primary cannon most of the time just because I'm, I'm enjoying the splash damage effects and I end up getting doubles and even triple kills a lot of the time which is cool. Every now and then I will use the canister shot to hit somebody if they're running and I can't like bounce it off of something or hit the ground but uh, that's one of the other benefits of the third person camera is your shot actually comes from a higher angle so if you need to hit an explosive round on the ground you can do so from the third person camera easier than you can from the first person camera. And you'll see here I popped my quick repair to get my health back up, then pop my smoke to conceal my position, and then I do the longer repair. And I can get my tank from being almost dead, like one shot away from being dead, to almost full health in no time at all. And that is just why the heavy tank is so freaking powerful. And it's aggravating the fight against when you're an assault player because you can throw both your grenades into it and even hit it with an AT rocket gun. And this thing can get its health back up so quickly that uh, if it kills you and has a, another 10, 15 seconds to stay alive, it can almost be at full health again. So it's almost like you didn't really do much to it at all. Um, you absolutely have to gang up on heavy tanks and a smart tank driver and I'd like to think I'm a decent tank driver I won't claim to be the best tank driver in the world or anything But I know what I'm doing for the most part I can keep this thing alive because I'm playing smart keeping my distance not letting myself get surrounded and whenever I do get taken out it's because the enemy team is basically bum rushing me and hitting me with tons of things at the same time. Rarely will I get taken out by a single other tank or just a couple of infantry. It's too easy to take out assault players. They have to get so close to you to hit you with those explosive anti-tank grenades, which are one of the most effective weapons against you. And then their AT rocket guns leave them sitting ducks for you to take them out. So sometimes I'll just let an assault player go prone, think he's about to get the AT rocket gun shot on me, I'll take a shot even if his shot hits me it doesn't really matter too much as I'll still have pretty much a guaranteed easy kill against them. So you just have to make yourself so vulnerable as an assault player to do some real damage to these tanks. It can be real tricky. And uh, this is probably the most dangerous that it gets especially on this map here is going through the small city. This is where the enemy teams have the most opportunity to get close to you and that's where you can start getting hit by those grenades. So whenever that starts to happen I'll just pop the smoke and back out of the city and it's pretty hard for them to follow you. In addition to which most of these buildings are kind of fake cover for infantry. You'll notice I bounce a lot of my shots off of building walls. Uh, if a wall blows up from a shot right next to an infantry it'll usually kill them with splash damage. So people hide in buildings as cover and tanks basically just take advantage of that. You'll actually see me break that wall right there. See the guy up there and look at that shot that I put on the second floor. That shot wouldn't have made it there if I fired it from the first person camera, but because the third person camera is so high up in the air, I can get my shot over the second floor of that building. Now when it comes to doing incredibly well with a tank, obviously accuracy in general, game sense is going to be your best friend. Knowing when to push in, knowing when to uh, get out of dodge and pop your smoke and just retreat. Basically the skill of your team is also going to play a very big role in how long you can stay alive. You are a very big target, you're going to draw a lot of fire from assault classes and other uh, classes trying to get close up to you. If your team can protect you and see these classes coming in and take them out before they can get close then you'll stay alive a lot longer. You also want to follow your team around. Again don't go on flanking routes by yourself. Don't think that you're just because you're in a tank you can take on the whole enemy team by yourself. 
you can't, and when you are on your own, uh, trust me, they love to group up and try and take you out. So work with your team. That will increase your odds of survival. If your team's getting absolutely trashed, your survival time in the tank probably won't be very long either. I like playing on Conquest because, generally speaking, it prevents the enemy team from grouping up too intensely where they can on operations uh, you can start getting hit by just tons of AT rocket guns and there's not a lot you can do about it because you'll have 32 players in a very small area of the map and if you get close to that area then you're gonna die quickly but on conquest it's more spread out and you can uh, choose your battles a little bit more strategically and you won't end up dying quite as much so I think conquest is uh, increases your chances of staying alive a lot longer in the tank then again if you're playing on operations and your team is supporting you really well you can have some extremely intense and lucrative moments I think the tank is one of the most consistent ways to just get a crap load of points in this game are the tanks overpowered and imbalanced well I mean to a certain extent I would have to say yes I think the heavy tank without question is better than the other two tanks in the game simply because of the quick repair function it is just too damn good having so much armor and the ability to repair it in such a short period of time uh, feels unfair at points and then the other element to it is that if i decide that i'm just going to dedicate myself to tanking in a round i can basically guarantee that i'll be on top of the scoreboard so from that perspective i feel like maybe the point allocation system should be changed up in tanks a little bit maybe you get less points for a kill while you're in a tank or something i'm not really sure but but it is just so easy for me to dominate when I decide that I'm going to be using a heavy tank. And it certainly doesn't hurt your kill-death ratio either. If you've been struggling with tanks, I hope this video gives you a good idea of how to start or some techniques to try out. And definitely go for that heavy tank if you want to feel some true power. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.